They say we're getting some of that smoke from the Canadian wildfires today. I'm looking at the sun. I can actually look directly at the sun right now. It's kind of that hazy that the sun is. Um, if I can show it behind me. I don't know if you can see it. The sun's back here somewhere. And um, it's just not very bright out. So it's actually nice and cool right now. So maybe I can get some stuff done today and not get overheated. So hopefully it's a productive day. Morning, everybody. All you chickens are ready to get out of here, aren't you? Come on out. All right, time to check on the turkeys. And there they are. All of them. It's obviously hot enough here in the summer. They probably don't need the heat lamps, really. But uh, haven't lost a single turkey. All the turkeys are doing fine. So I've said it in previous videos that we're overstocked on um, our pastures. And this little pasture right here, this little area right behind the barn, we had closed this off for a little bit. We actually buried Lucy out here, our milk cow, down there. And uh, we let this area rest. And we opened it back up to them and um, given them this area to graze. And I want to close this pasture off over here. And if you can see, we actually have some electric netting that we stretched through here. We wanted to make sure they were trained on that electric netting. And I'm going to pull that up today. And I'm going to put that over here. I'm going to put that down this other side over here. And we're going to try to open it up and give them some areas that aren't fenced in. And then I'm going to close this pasture off over here and let it rest. Then after that, I think I'm going to work on one of the tractors. And I'm actually going to try to make the wheel spacing a little bit wider. Turn off the electric fence. And we'll move this netting around. So my electric fence runs around this perimeter fence and that gives me something to attach to so I can power up some temporary netting or some temporary fencing. And it also keeps the animals from rubbing on the fence. So the netting we have, I think, is 100 and, they're 144 feet per section. They're a little bit heavier to carry around. Curious how big of an area we can make with it. We'll end up using it to make three sides of a pasture for the, uh, or an area for the animals to graze. I'm just gonna just start laying this out down the hill. And this will be a tangled mess probably. Hopefully I can reach all the way to the end of this pasture fence. Well, the netting did reach. Probably start it right here at this corner post. If I had two sections of netting, I'd be able to get all this area in here fenced in. It's amazing how much extra square footage you go from one net to two nets. It's like four times. I mean, it, it, it becomes a multiplier when you got sections, like multiple sections of netting. So on this end, we'll start against the wall right here. So on the very end of the fence, I've got these fiberglass fence posts and they're, they're coated fiberglass. There's like a vinyl coating over it so you don't get any fiberglass splinters. And I just weave this through the net and then stick it in the ground. And it really helps make you, the end nice and rigid so that they don't bend it over. And there's actually, you can drive these with a fence post driver too they make a cap that goes on the top so you can pound these in well that's not a lot of grass <laughs> to be able to give them but it's something at least it's a little bit of fresh grass man if I just had one more section of netting I would be able to I'd be able to swing that out and around and give them such a bigger area all right hook up our battery charger, or not a battery charger, or a fence charger. Now let's see if I can chase all the animals back the other direction. 
Come on, sheep. Come on, sheep, sheep. You need to, you need to go to a gate, not in a circle. So my are a milk cow and there's a few chickens still left out here. I want to get them in here so I can close this pasture off so that it can rest. And uh, I think the best way to do that is just sprinkle a little bit of feed out here and hopefully they come running. There comes Maya. Right on, right on cue. Hey, everybody's coming. Look at that. Not just these chickens. All right, your last chicken. Come on, get in there. All right, they're all in. Before I walk away from this, I should test this fence. See what we have. Hmm. Once again, I have nothing, just like I did on the pig fence. Well, that ain't good. I trust my... Ah, no, there's something there. <laughs> I said I was going to trust this thing. <laughs> I guess I shouldn't trust it. There's a little bit of shock there. It's not enough to register. So these nets are really prone to grounding out. I mean, because they touch the they touch the ground so much, you know. Well, I'm not really seeing anything. I'm gonna go ahead and unhook this. Yep, there it is. Six thousand volts. So it's just it's just grounding out on the on the grass I mean and this isn't terribly tall grass either just the way it's gonna be so there's still enough electricity that they're gonna feel it because I felt it at the other end so I think that it'll hold them in and it gives them a very small area to be able to graze so right now they have this little area and they have this little area back here behind the barn and that's all they have right now we're gonna try to get let them eat that for a couple days and then I'll probably give them a bale of hay while we let the other side rest. I mean, that's just what we got to do. So these wheels are a two piece. You have a rim and then you have a center hub and you can bolt that hub on different ways to adjust the width. Now I've already done that and I've got it adjusted out using the rims, but today we're going to use wheel spacers and we're going to put a spacer in here on the axle it's going to make the wheel come out a lot farther we're going to add about another five inches to the width today first thing i want to do is see if i can break these loose oh there we go i'm just going to hoist up on the frame for the loader it's attached to the axles it's it's what I used last time, it worked fine. Come on. There we go. We're out, we just gotta walk it out of here. So this here is one of the wheel spacers. You can see, I think they're two and a half inches thick, but they basically have a set of holes so that you can bolt them onto this hub. And then they've got a brand new set of lugs on here to put the wheel back on. And uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure these are two and a half inches. These are gonna fit on fairly tight. That way there's no slop in this. So we'll see how this is to put on. I think it's gonna be a snug fit. Like I said, I think these are going to be fairly snug. Like, almost exact fit. So it's very snug trying to get it over these lug nuts, but then it looks like, oh my, 
it looks like the hub I don't know if it'll fit over that hub that's gonna be even a tighter fit I think trying to get it over the center hub well I tried to pull that on with a socket wrench and it didn't feel like it was gonna go so I'm gonna take these back off I'm gonna measure this we're gonna see how tight of a fit this actually is because it seems way too tight all right we got it off let's measure this Crop dusters are out spraying fields today, flying right over us. All right, I'm getting, of course, this is probably supposed to be metric, 6.645. I'm getting the biggest measurement, somewhere close to 6.590, 6.589. Golly, that's like 50 thousandths difference. There's no way that's going to fit on there. So this was the first set of wheel spacers that they had made for a T654. And the first set that they had made, I had to send back because they didn't counter bore big enough here for a socket to be able to fit in there and tighten it on. And I noticed that first thing, uh, whenever I got them out of the box, I sent it back to them. They remachined them and they sent them back to me. And that was last year. I've been sitting in a box this whole time till now I just hadn't got around to it. So I feel bad, you know, because I should have got them out and checked them and tried to put them on so that I could let the company know then and there that whether they worked or not. And it's been a whole year, I think, or pretty close to a year. And um, they're not right. So I don't think I want to even try to call the company up and complain because I didn't get them out of the box. Now, luckily, I do have a metal lathe. And all I need to do is take 50 thousandths off this inner diameter here on the back side. So I'm going to try to put it in the lathe, get it all chucked up, and just see if I can make these fit myself. So I've got an Atlas 12-inch commercial lathe. This is an Atlas made by Klausing Corporation. And um, this barely fits on here. It is just barely above the bed of the lathe. But it does fit. I could not put this in a four jaw chuck and make it perfectly centered because it wouldn't fit with these lugs. With these lugs sticking out the back, the chuck had to be smaller than that diameter. So I've got it in a three jaw chuck. It's not perfectly centered. I think it's out about 10 thousandths. But really on a grand scheme of things, on a big tire like that, you're not gonna feel three thousandths being out of center. So I think I've got everything set up. I'm gonna go ahead and start cutting away at that inner diameter, see if we get these to fit. Putting a little bit of cutting fluid on there. That's what you see smoking. So I have a dial gauge down here so that I can put it right back to the same spot every time. All right, I think I got it. May sand it just a little bit just to make it look a little nicer. There we go. So I'll give you a quick look at what we did. So we cut that inside edge in just a little bit. Hopefully you can see that. It's, uh, it's not quite as nice looking as the rest of it, but really, doesn't look too bad. And of course, we'll have to probably hit this on with a mallet. Still gonna be a fairly snug fit. It's pulled in just enough. It's over the hub. It's not evenly pulled over the hub, but it's on the hub. So I think now I'll try putting the nuts on again, tightening it down and pulling it together. Hopefully, it will work this time. So close, so close. 
I'm going to have to take it back off and take just a little bit more off of it. Oh, so close. All right, I ran it through the lathe one more time. I took a little bit more off the inside, and then I put this chamfer on the back edge. It had a round over here originally, so I just kind of put this chamfer on there to kind of simulate what it had before. Hopefully this one fits. It's pulling together. Definitely tight. There ain't gonna be no slop in this thing. Come on. Oh yes, look at that. <laughs> Woo. Well, I didn't have a socket that would fit on my torque wrench. I'm gonna have to get one. Right now I'm just gonna tight it. Tighten it as oh tight as I can. <clears throat> Alright, I got the first wheel spacer on. I'm probably regretting this purchase right now. This is probably way too much effort, especially with everything that's gone wrong. But now that I got one on, I gotta finish it. So I'm gonna go ahead and do everything I just did and do the other tire. We'll come back and we'll measure it, see how wide it is. Well, I think I got it done just in time. It is <laughs> starting to sprinkle. This last one I knew exactly what to do, so I think I got this last side done in like 45 minutes. And um, we are right at about six and a half feet. Six and a half feet. So, whew, I'm pretty sure this will still fit on my dad's equipment trailer. I use his trailer whenever I have to move this or take it off the property. And I think it'll, it'll still fit between the fender wells. And, I decided to do this last year, and of course he's been sitting around for a while, but I wanted to get them on before I filled the tires full of fluid. I've been wanting to put ballast in the tires. That way it really helps with the lifting capacity and it just really is gonna help with the stability. And I just wanted to make it a little bit wider before I did that. So now it's done. I really don't know if it was worth the effort now that I've done it. I probably, I would not probably go back and do this again. I probably would have just left it exactly the width it was, filled them full of fluid and been done with it. So I hate to, I guess I hate to, to down the wheel spacers, but man, it is just a tight fit and a lot of effort to do this. I just don't know if I really know if it's worth it just for an extra five inches of width. So after it's all done and said, I'm pretty sure that they, I think they just, they messed up their drawing or something. They dimensionally, it was off twice. So the inner diameter should have been a hundred thousandths bigger. And then when you look at this hub here and you look at the gap that is between the hub on the wheel spacer and the hub on the wheel, there's a big gap right there. So that same hundred thousandths should have been right there, should have been bigger on that outside. So it should have been bigger on the outside, smaller on the inside. No, wait a minute, I said that wrong. Bigger on the inside, bigger on the outside. And I think they, they either got their drawing off or something um, and ended up just making them wrong. But anyway, it's done, it's over with. Luckily I had the tools to be able to fix it or else it would have been a huge ordeal. And they may not even wanna mess with it after it'd been a year since they shipped them to me. So it's a good thing I had the tools to fix it. Glad it's done and over with. This has been a year, actually this has been probably a year and a half, at least a year and a half in the making to do this because I think I waited 14 weeks just to get the wheel spacers the first time. And then I had to send them back because they didn't bore them out big enough to fit a socket and the nut and everything down in the hole. So, and then I had to wait like another several weeks, but then I didn't end up putting them on. So I guess that didn't really matter. But anyway, it's done, it's over with, it's starting to rain. So I need to go ahead and get all my tools put up and get them out of the rain. And then we can go check on the animals. I really don't think they even went out there today. I don't even think they realized there was a new pasture. Hey boys, 
You still got a little bit of time till supper, okay? It's not time yet. Hey, 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 hey. I'm no, you're supposed to go left. Go left. Oh. There you go, good girl. Come here. I oh, you're slowing down. What's going on? Come here. Look. Come on. You're looking at me. You're looking at the pigs. You're looking at me. You're looking at the pigs. The pigs are not going to hurt you. Come on. So anyway, I feel like most of the stuff I did today was almost um, pointless, I guess, in a way. This area ended up being rather small. None of the animals came out here. And then the wheel spacers just ended up being way more work than what they were probably worth. Maybe if they would have went on, like, and just slid right on the way they were supposed to, I probably wouldn't be frustrated with the whole situation. But, um, it, <laughs> yeah, it just went a lot longer than what I, what I thought it should, especially with me having to fix them. That one sheep keeps on, um, that one you keeps on stomping her feet at me. We've had a, one of these rams got, um, we think got slight infection from having his band turning him into a weather. Do they call him a weather on a sheep? But um, we ended up having to give him shots. I think we've gave him left, like the last three nights in a row. So we kind of chase him around, get him in the barn, and then single him out and give that one shot. So they're not real happy with us here lately, the sheep aren't. No, 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 you discovered it there for a second. And uh, it's been a long day and I don't feel like I accomplished much by the time it's done and over with. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and end this video where it's at. Um, Rebecca's been trying to sell the goats and we think we have the billy goats sold, hopefully. And then once we get the billy goats sold and gone, um, once we get chewy, sold and gone, we can take that electric netting and we can put this out here and we can make a really big area for them. And uh, we can also do it on the other side where the gate opens over by the orchard. We can kind of put netting out around to our garden and then back around to the pond dam and we can do a big area on that side and we can kind of switch the netting from side to side and give them quite a bit more acreage if we need to or at least some more grass for them to eat. So. Anyway, um, I think that's gonna be it for this video, guys. It's been a long day, and um, I really don't know what to say. I'm just kinda disappointed in the day. It, that's the way it happens. It happens that way. Um, I guess a, either way, a better day spent here at home doing this kind of stuff rather than being at work. So it's all good in the end. So thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next one.